plans, our agenda to increase uh, the number of tourists who are visiting <coughs> Egypt. All this and more um, we are going to uh, discuss together with our dear guest, uh, live uh, via phone, uh, Mr. Yahya Abdul Qadir, our tourism expert and counselor. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. Uh, thank you and good morning, Ms. Miller. Uh, Mr. Abdel Qadir, um, of um, the most negatively affected uh, sectors in Egypt after January 2011, of course, it was tourism. But in the last decade, we are um, increasingly regaining our position and regaining approximately the same number before 2011 and maybe more. I'd like to have your vision regarding that before going into more details. Well, really, uh, we're so fortunate currently, you know, like uh, 2023 versus uh, 2011, we have an increase in like in the tourist receipts mm. uh, are estimated at $7 billion on, on one side. And again, since that time, we had an increase in the, uh, in the capacity of hotel rooms like we developed and we constructed uh, over 20,000 rooms nationwide all the way from Haggadah, uh, Masa Alam, Alamein, Masamatur, Luxor, and Aswan. So this is one positive uh, aspect. And again, uh, for the first six months of this year, we received over 7 million visitors. One million of them are German, one million Saudis, uh, mm -hmm. and one million uh, Russian visitors. So there has been great development in many aspects in the uh, infrastructure, in the superstructure, and in the uh, promotion and marketing of We're going to speak about, about them, about all these um, elements one by one. And if you please, since you started with hotel rooms, because I know that this is a very important side of the coin, how do you see the importance of diversifying our, uh, our um, levels or our, um, let's say, um, the accommodation in general? I mean, of course, we should have five-star hotels, but five four, three motels, uh, even youth houses, you name it. How do you see diversifying the rooms we have? Of course, you know, like uh, hotel corporations, you know, like uh, worldwide and the, uh, the local ones here in Egypt, you know, like they develop and invest in, uh, in hospitality properties according to the market needs. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, like in some resorts, you need like an Alamein, a very luxurious and upscale, you know, like accommodation and lodging. Mm -hmm. But in, in the popular locations on the Red Sea, for example, you can, you know, like look for like uh, the three and four stars hotels and resorts, you know, like that's, you know, like uh, affordable tourism where, you know, like uh, a charter flights, you know, like weekly, you know, like fly to the Red Sea resorts and bring hundreds of thousands of visitors. Yeah. So the accommodation, you know, like development is based on the capacity and the market demand in that respect. You know, Mr. Abdel Qadir, just a few minutes ago, I had uh, the opportunity to speak with one of our IT professors. And we were speaking about using IT and modern technologies in various domains. And here I'm going to implement that. In tourism, how do you see the importance of uh, having... Uh, accurate data about everything using AI or artificial intelligence in promotion in, in tourism promotions <coughs> in uh, producing more films in, in, in uh, uh, launching initiatives whether um, uh, around us I mean in uh, the Arab region or internationally how do you see the use of modern technology in promoting our tourism segment well you know like currently you know like over 75 percent of the travel demand is generated through uh, online booking and online reservation according to the travel velocity, according to the trip advisor, you know, like locations and market search engines. So this is the most important aspect. Mm -hmm. And then after that comes, you know, like the uh, aspects of promoting the destinations through, you know, like the virtual reality, through the holograms and through the social media. So now really, uh, as you already mentioned, uh, IT and artificial intelligence are two of the main domains that will be, you know, like monopolizing and promoting and operating uh, tourism in, in, the, in the coming decades, inshallah. Yeah. Sir, also uh, the renovation of many of our museums and to uh, uh, once again reopen many of them in different uh, cities 
and to make sure that every uh, museum has its own taste and um, to preserve the, uh, the pieces we have there, to make sure that we do have a very um, a specialized restoration department, to make sure that every piece is going to be dealt with respect, if I may call it this way. How do you see efforts exerted by the state to boost our museum sector? Well, really, uh, this is quite true because the Greek-Roman Museum, you know, like in Alexandria, took uh, around 10 years, you know, like to develop, innovate, and restore. Mm -hmm. So it's a longer process, you know, like for restoration of archaeological objects and artifacts. And within the past 10 years, we had really great development. We developed, you know, like eight new airports, Sphinx Airport, administrative capitals, in the Red Sea region, in Upper Egypt, and Matro, and the Wadi Gidid as well. So really all these locations are upgraded, you know, like and motivated the tourism demand. Mm -hmm. And again, we uh, felt, you know, like and developed seven new museums, like the al Fustat Museum for Civilization, which is a great project. And then we have a private uh, managed and operated museum in Haggadah. And we have, you know, like renovated and restored the Rand Avenue, the Kibash Avenue in, in Luxor. And we have the Mummification Museum in Luxor as well. So the the, uh, the Royal Vehicles Museum, for example, for me it was brand new and I didn't know, uh, forgive my ignorance, I didn't know, for example, that we have a museum for our Royal Vehicles. Uh, this is, um, I mean, this is again to diversify our museums, to have a museum of, um, a modern museum like the Museum of Mahmoud Mukhtar, for example, the great Egyptian modern artist. I mean, how do you see this stuff and how to propagate for such places? Well, you're quite true, you know, like museums, you know, like could be like archaeological one, like, you know, like the Cairo Museum, like the Luxor, uh, and of course the Grand Egyptian Museum, which will be opening soon, inshallah. But apart from that, there is like uh, specific museums, you know, like, like the uh, Post Office Museum, like the Carriage Museum, Royal Carriages, like Mahmoud Mukhtar, which, you know, like comes under, you know, like the art and culture museums, you know, like uh, nationwide. And I have students of the College of Mascom, they develop just a project, you know, like they call it museology about the art museum, around top 50 of them nationwide in Egypt, you know, like. Uh, how they can, you know, like promote tourism, local interest, culture, understanding, tolerance. And because of that, I want to ask a final question, Mr. Abdel Qadir, because we, uh, we are in the summer and now we do have the tourism of concerts, particularly in the North Coast. How do you see this as a relatively new uh, way to attract uh, tourists, particularly from the Arab region? Well, historically, you know, like uh, summer season, you know, like is a great uh, time for holding concerts, festivals, carnivals uh, worldwide. Uh, for example, in Morocco, they had Mawazim currently now and in other locations in the Arab world as well. But the Mediterranean is very famous for hosting this uh, very, you know, like exciting and entertaining uh, carnivals and festivals. That's why uh, the Egypt Air, for example, is having two flights a week to carry passengers from the Arab world, uh, from Cairo, you know, like to Alamein, where they can enjoy this uh, very sophisticated concert with top stars, you know, like, and entertainers from the Arab world. Uh, anyways, I think we should all be proud of being Egyptians. Our country is such a rich country, and I think all our um, or our monuments or our of our tourism uh, sites, they are the gifts of uh, us to humanity at large. We were very much delighted to have with us via phone Mr. Yahya Abdel Qadr, our tourism expert and counselor. By this, we come to the end of our episode. Stay tuned on my TV International always for more updates. Many thanks for watching. This was Irmina Abdurrahman.